Hello, hello. We are here for another show and tell with the Melissa Mendez. Melissa, welcome to show and tell. You're a pro already at show and tell, and we're very happy to have you here. How are you doing today? Good, good. Thank you so much for having me. Very excited. First time presenting with Joe at the show and tell. So this is super exciting. And also can't wait to see what everybody's been building we haven't seen it in a while so that's gonna be fun it is it's only once a month so only one time every 30 days we get to see the beautiful work live presented from the community and yeah i'm just excited to see what we have i didn't look at any of the projects we have a list of everybody going i'm staying surprised i want to see these presentations and it's going to happen in gather so right now, go to finsuite.com slash gather. That's going to redirect you to the gather space. And we're in the auditorium. And we're going to present in there. If you don't know gather, definitely create an account. Uh, if you're a pro at the space, we'll see you in there. And now I am going to go into gather. I'm already there. Hi, everybody. Can anybody hear me? Oh, okay, perfect. Hi, Brianna. Okay, now I'm in here. Thank you. I'm on a, a different computer than my usual one. It's a temporary computer and it's not very powerful. So I couldn't have the YouTube and the gather open at the same time. So I had to close YouTube. Now I'm here and gather and we are ready to rock and roll here. So Victoria is going to be behind the scenes with the order of people. So Victoria, who do we have first on gather? On, on show and tell. And what, actually, before we get into that, let's say hello to everybody inside Gather here. We have Gabe, Magdalena, Pieber, Rohan, Sergey, Briona, Josiah, Melissa Mendez, of course. We have Robert, Victoria, Zach, myself, Jeff, Ada, Anto, Ben, Benjamin, Fazlu, John, Carrie, Lauren, Webflow Tips, Rick, and Anonymous. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Now, Victoria, who do we have first here? Thank you. Welcome, everyone, to Show and Tell. First, a little recap. It's going to be five minutes of presentation and then three minutes for Q&A. I will let you know, guys, when you are up to four minutes, just so you guys know that you have one minute left. We're starting first with Aida, and then we have Rohan. And after Rohan, I'll let you know who's next. Yay, welcome, Aida. Aida. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi. Can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Hi. So, uh, yeah, it's my first time actually presenting here in Gather. So, uh, well, in Gather, in Show and Tell. And, um, yeah, let me just share a project that I've been working on. It's basically for my, um, it's for my portfolio because it's something I want to be, um, it's an interior design project that I've been doing because it's a niche I want to get into. And uh, basically, it's a redesign of, um, I will show you the before and after of what I did. So you can see the difference. Um, and well, just a little bit my evolution. Let me just share the screen one second. Oh, 
Okay. Well, I start with the after, okay? This is what I'm working on now. It's not finished. Um, I'm gonna share the link so you all can check it if you want. Here we go. So yeah, it's an interior design project. Um, like an interior design firm, I just chose that it was in Montana. And um, well, I'm just gonna go down a little bit. This is like the hero section. And I basically, um, my main intention was just to showcase the space. So I just went for like big, like just like imagery, imagery big imagery and just that like, mainly how I would like to see a space, for example, if I'm about to choose an interior design uh, firm to do my property. So something that it's just got a lot of images. Then um, I just took, this was like the um, feature project section. And then here there is no interactions or anything because I first wanted to build the whole project. So it just might seem a little bit boring now. Um, this is like, would be like an Instagram section. So you could just go and see all the recent posts and stuff and then like the footer and the email link. Then I also have, for example, you can click on the projects and it will take you to a project from here. It's give a bit of information about the project itself and just some images of the property. Then this, the link will take you to the main page. And then I also made a menu. The menu is also working. I did this little um, interactions here. And my little project section, which is also unfinished. So I want to just highlight, for example, what would be the most important projects and just choose like four and then the rest, I would just like put them in here. I haven't finished this yet. And the footer and what else? Let me just go. Expertise. Then I also did the same than more or less the menu here. And I think, yeah, that's all. That's all I got because I didn't finish the process. I got um, it. I got it. So yeah, I just wanted to get some maybe feedback or some advice and some things. Um, and then... I think that it is super clean. I love that the brand just, it's very cohesive throughout the whole website. Um, everything is very minimal, clean. You're, you're, I think like you're one of your strong suits when you're designing websites, because I've seen it repeatedly on your site, is that you really, really focus on the main goal, which is like either the product or the feature that you're trying to highlight. So you really are very good at choosing the right photography, the right font, the right layout for this type of, of website. And now going a little bit deeper into making it like pop or something like that and knowing that you need to do that, I would 100% incorporate smooth scroller here and yes. add some data feed on the images. And make Sir, some can, can you repeat again what you just said? Because the audio is a little bit... Um... Oh, my audio is bad? A little bit like rainy, yeah. What about now? It, yeah. Oh, Great feedback. I hear feedback. like most of it, just the, the last bit. I'm sorry, Joe, go ahead. I was going to say great feedback needs great audio. 
So <laughs> we'll uh, we'll wait for Melissa to get that set up. I'll jump in with some comments, Melissa, while you're you're setting up here. Ada, I really love the large typography here. This is so nice. This should not be a reading site. I would not be very happy if I saw the title, paragraph, title, paragraph type flow here. I don't see a single paragraph anywhere. It's all large text, and I love that. I think large text is coming back. Large text is really important because nobody wants to read. They just want to read Haven, Mind, Body, and Soul. And if they want to read the whole thing, it's still a short passage. And because there's not a lot of text, it allows me to really focus on those graphics, that that's what you're selling here. You're selling this, this visual. You're not selling a body paragraph, right? People, when they, someone hires a, a designer, it's about the design. It's not about what you say you're going to do. So I really, really love this large text. One thing I would update is some of that smaller text. And this is a perfect example, silver pool. I see renovation and full home furnishings. But this text mm -hmm. is so small for me and the contrast is not always that deep that I was having a little bit of trouble reading that as you were scrolling. Not terrible. I, I you know, I could still read it. I'm, I'm looking at it and reading it. Uh, but just, I like a little bit bigger text. And I know that it looks beautiful with the super big text and the super tiny text, but I would maybe add a little letter spacing or maybe just one or two pixels higher. And with or without that change, I think this is a home run site. I really like it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joe. Is my audio coming out good now? Now it's yeah. much better, yeah. Definitely. Okay, perfect. I was saying that you, you're you always great at, at finding the right photography, the right layout. Like you really focus on, on the product or the feature that you're trying to show on the site. And I love that about you, about your design. Now, uh, going a little bit further and knowing that you've used GSAP, for example, on the, on the challenges that we've done, I would really take advantage of smooth scrolling here, uh, smooth scroller from GSAP. And then if you assign attributes of data speed and maybe data lag, to the images that are, for example, like on the Instagram section, yep. so you can make them move and really just bring them to life. And maybe some animation on the on the big text, uh, like span animation, so they can cascade slowly and just make it more interactive. But I wouldn't fill it out fill it, fill it out with animation. I would keep it very simple, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I love it. This is all my style. You're killing it. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. You're welcome. Ada, I just wanted to add on top of this that I really love how you use the cars. So the car style, when one car is going on top of another one, and then you get to the bottom, it's like you're revealing the conduct as section. I've seen this effect before on different websites and the usage here is really good, especially when one card is going on top of another one and when you nearly get to the end, it's continue moving the previous card. So this effect is really smooth and nice. Mm -hmm. um, I agree with Melissa, if you add smooth scrolling, it will add even more smooth effect and this will help to, you know, like, to enjoy every image on the site, but mm -hmm. really great site. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Sergey. This is really dope. I really like it. Um, I think just overall tone and, and the visual direction. My only comment or question is just just the, the readability of the subtext underneath the header, because it's a white text on a white background. I wonder what kind of impact could that have potentially on accessibility or readability? So I uh, wonder if a dark overlay or slight darker overlay uh, underneath the text may help and make it easier to read. Yes, I've been trying to like figure out how I can make this like, you know, a bit more legible. That's why I thought maybe you guys have some ideas or something. I've been playing around with it, changing the color, trying to see what looked best. So 
yeah, I will. I will play a little bit more. See if I find another alternative. Maybe just really slight gradient in the bottom with some more. The gradient, point. yeah, that would be a good idea. Yeah. The problem is the image is so beautiful. You don't want to cover the image. So whatever it is, it has to be like really subtle. It it can't get in the way. It can't draw too much attention to it. But yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, size helps, right? Just making it a little bit bigger that it doesn't fix the contrast problem, but at least it becomes more readable mm -hmm. with more size. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Honestly, I know what you're trying to do because sometimes I do the same. Like sometimes you you want to risk accessibility for good design, which is not good. But but yeah, maybe just adding like a gradient that goes from one edge to the other. Mm -hmm. What Ben says, correct. Okay, awesome. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you so much, Ada. That was a, a great share. Really appreciate that. Thank you so much. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Up next, we have Rohan. And after Rohan, will be Ben Solinsky. Nice. Thanks, Victoria. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Awesome. I'm going to share my screen and do the presentation. Can you see my screen? Yes. Great. So this is about Noble Airtable. For those of you who don't know, Noble Airtable is an Airtable app or an extension that lets you control Webflow CMS from Airtable. Um, we have now, we are now working on version two of this application. We've completed the um, redesign of the UI that I'm now about to present. I will walk you through uh, every screen or every stage that you would encounter in this application. So uh, at the top, you can see the name of the page. So this is what you would see when you download the app. When you click on to click, uh, create a new connect, the first CTA is to log in with FinSuite. This is our um, SSO membership platform. So one account for all FinSuite products. When you are logged in, you're back onto this, the start screen with your details at the bottom. So um, you click onto this button, which takes you to the authorized page. Here, you can select any Webflow project that you have saved in your FinSuite account. If you don't have an option, then you can create, um, add a new API key by clicking onto this button here. The next stage would be building the connect. Here, you would choose where the data is flowing from, the Webflow collection, um, the respective Airtable table, and connect all the fields, the mandatory Webflow fields, mandatory Noble fields, and any additional fields. And this would be the stage two of uh, creating a connect. In stage three, you would choose the type of sync, one of the two options, and the type of trigger either manual or automatic. The next step is verification. Here, Noble will check if all the field mappings have been done correctly or not. If there is an error, then the message is given at the bottom. So the final screen, well, uh, that was the final step of creating a connect. So when you hit publish, you would see this, which is the synchronization page. You can also view all of the referenced collections or link tables inside of this dropdown. If you had an error, this is the, the error message. If there were no errors, then you have the success message. So after the synchronization is done, you have the dashboard page. Here you would get a list of all the connects available and information linked to that particular connect. Um, paid plans. And you can see the usage of the plan that you're on. 
So for example, if the pro plan comes with 2000 records to process, then you can see the number of records processed across all instances of Noble. And um, the number that's remaining from your plan for that month. If you've hit the plan limit, then this is the notification, a warning message. All of that would be displayed in the dashboard and an app update message. This is the base log. So you would see the base log on clicking the C usage log. Rohan, just to let you know, there's so, one minute left. Uh, so you would see the usage log, sorry, yeah. So inside of the usage log, you would see all of the Noble installations. So you may have different bases in your Airtable account. And if you have a Noble installer on any of those bases, you can see the list of all those bases here. And you can click on to see more details to see all the connects that are inside of every base. And then finally, we've got the connect log. Here you would choose, here you would get, it's like Zap history, which would give you details of um, every synchronization. If records were processed successfully or if they had error or not, when they were processed, everything. So you would select the Airtable base, the connect, <clears throat> You can filter out to see if you if you want to see only things that have failed. And a further filter to see records that have failed to sync. So let's choose this one, which has failed. You've got the error message here and also on the field level. And that is it. That's the end of the walkthrough. Let me know if you have any questions. Great. Thank you, Rohan. That was really nice. Um, I will add to this that Rohan designed this whole thing through a wireframe. He, we released the beta version of this like last year, and he has been on calls and calls and calls with users to get their feedback. And based on their feedback, he redesigned and he relayed out this entire application with no prior experience to UX work or UI design or anything like this, but he put it together and yeah, I think really impressive work. So great job, Rohan. It's hard for me to, to really comment on things I do and don't like because I helped with some of the iterations on this. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say great effort listening to the community, taking their feedback and then implementing it in a new UI. So great job for me. Yeah, awesome. Love it. Great job. Thank you. Awesome. Um, if any of you have any questions regarding the application or the UI itself, then I'm, I'm open to answering. Yeah, if you guys have questions, drop them on the chat or also on Twitter. Any feedback would be really cool to keep growing this. I think more comments will come when we start using the application itself. Mm -hmm. Feedback is always easier when you start using it and playing around with it. And then you're like, okay, now this is not right. This is not good. But yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see when that happens. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Rohan. Okay, up next we have Ben and after Ben it will be Josiah. So Ben, you have you have the stage and five minutes for your presentation. Okay, cool, thank you. Um hi everybody. Can you see my screen? Hopefully. Yes. Okay. So I wanted to walk you through how I redid my website. And actually that website is available as clonable, so I'm putting the link to the site and to the clonable file here in the chat if you want to play around. So with that website, um, I wanted to make something um, engaging and rich in terms of like interactions and animations. 
But at the same time, I wanted to make it easy to update and I wanted to um, like not overdo it, not be too flashy. And I feel like this is a, um, I don't know if you guys agree with me, but this is a tricky balance to, um, to, to get to. Uh, and sometimes you can get carried away with that. Um, so um, I have a lot of, lot of interactions there. Um, I have a work page also where um, I took, I think I, I wanted to share this wonderful idea. I took it from um, Adam from Reloom. Um, on Reloom, they have this uh, lock and unlock scrolling functionality. So anytime um, you want to kind of have an inner scrolling for showcasing some content or some projects, when you click, you just like lock log the scroll. Um, and I think it's a, it's a cool UX, cool little UX pattern to have. Um, so yeah, this, this is more to just like, um, to, to, um, to walk you through, to share the link with you, to let you play around with that, because, uh, you know, I, I want to walk you through like, like the, the whole page now. Um, but I've been experimenting a lot with, um, different types of scroll animations, hover animations, and kind of um, hopefully made that work together. Um, and also I wanted to recommend Joseph Berry's course for that because that was a tremendous help in, um, in doing that page. Um, and I actually, um, I was actually going to ask you because I, I'm thinking about um, maybe putting an article on how to not hate redesigning your personal website <laughs> because that that i i think that was the first time that i truly enjoyed the process and i didn't feel like hating it um and it's also like the whole process was efficient instead of just procrastinating until i feel like it's good to share um so let me know, guys, if you if you feel like um, reading such a thing, because I think it was a, an eye opening experience for me that redesigning your personal website can actually be enjoyable. Um, so um, so, yeah, I think um, if you like if you guys have any um, any feedback or any questions after browsing through the site, uh, I would be super interested to hear that like i i don't want to just like go through every page right now because uh i think it would be more valuable if we can uh, share some thoughts or discuss stuff mm -hmm. yeah i remember i saw it on twitter and from then i i've been a fan of your work it, everything you do is very minimal um sort of like scandinavian style and i love it <laughs> Uh, I see all of the jo Joseph Berry animations there, and I love it. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of that in there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but they're very, like, you know, well-made, just when they, they're, where they're, where they have to be, like, nothing crazy. So I absolutely love it. If you want to share that article, I definitely would read it because I'm in the middle or not in the middle, I'm actually just about to finish my agency side. And it, I woke up at 4.30 a.m. today because I had so many oh. ideas. <laughs> so I, I will read it. And I know here, um, Penny, Penny, Penny says, please share it and Jeff too. So you have our support. Lovely. <laughs> yeah, just um, give me a fair bit of time, guys, to put it all together. But I'll, I'll do it and I'll let you know. Um, when it's done, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Great job, Ben. Yeah, it really uh, felt like scrolling through. Uh, just okay, hold on. Website. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. Yep. Me and Melissa will go first, and then anybody else can come in. Sure. Um, ben, I'm gonna read some of the comments here in Gather. Flows smoothly. Uh, we have amazing work, my friend. Great website, Ben. I love the style. Great balance and really nice fonts. I agree with all of these. 
I think the balance is really nice. A lot of white space and a lot of clarity into your projects, which is really what I want to see when I'm identifying a freelancer. I want to see the work. So there's not too much. Here are all of our services. Here's all the heavy text about how we treat clients. It's just simple. It's there. If I want to find a project, if I want to find something, you've made it available to me through this simplicity. So I like it. I think it's really good. Uh, also Love agree that the, that. Ty the typography is great. Uh, you have that kind of new modern -y font as a primary. Um, and then that like a really clean type paragraph font, the smaller font. What, what are those? Can you share those? Oh, yeah, Names? yeah, absolutely. Uh, let me just, um, so this is actually one family. So the heading font is called Degular Display and the mm -hmm. paragraph font is called Degular Text. I'll try nice. to Google it in a second, so I'll drop it in the chat. Cool, thank you. Yeah, really beautiful. I love it. I will say, as you kept scrolling through it and through it and through it, I was feeling done with the, the text animation. The mm. first time I scrolled through the page, I thought, great, nice text animation. But then it kind of felt like it was everywhere. And I think if it's in too many places, it kind of takes away from someone who's scrolling through the site and really identifying the work. So maybe just limit it to like headers and footers or just the biggest text on the page. It wasn't a problem. It, I, it's not like I disliked it. That was just one of the feelings I had as you kept scrolling through it. But I like the effect. It's cool. It, it really like makes your eyes go to the text and read it as it's coming in. So it's a win. So great job, Ben. Thank you. Oh, thanks so much. May I ask a question? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. I don't know if you can hear me. Um, I'm a big fan of this minimalist design aesthetic like you have here and like Aida had in her site. Um, but I'm wondering if you had any type of small call to action in the hero section, would that violate this design aesthetic? Um, that's a good, that's a good one. Uh, I think a traditional call to action would violate that aesthetic. So if you if you like put you know just a big button under the under the heading, um, it would violate it a bit and it would violate the hierarchy. I mean, at least that's what I think. Um, but if that's a call to action in the different form, so in the form of navigation button, in the form of some call to action in the lower right corner. I feel that would be acceptable if you want to keep the same level of balance, minimalism, um, mm -hmm. and all that. But this is just my opinion. Like I, I don't, um, like I'm not answering that as a just like design rule or something like that. This is just my my opinion and my gut feeling in terms of how to balance things out and you know still keep it minimal. Okay, thank you. I think the way they do it is uh, instead of a button, a text button with maybe like an arrow, something very minimal that just follows the, the same style. All right, okay. Mm -hmm. I agree, yeah. Awesome, thank you, Ben. Thank you. Can, ben. I, have, can I have a word about work page? Yeah. Uh, this concept of log scroll and log scroll it's great and i'm wondering whether you're thinking about like maybe when you click on lock scroll you look for all of them so you don't have to click on lock scrolling uh for every item so you just look overall and then you can freely scroll through the project in, if any project interested for you you unlock it and then you can scroll through mm -hmm. otherwise I, I... you have to always click this button lock scrolling yeah, I feel like this could also work totally. Uh, I I didn't have it in mind actually, so you gave me the inspiration right now. So thanks very much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah. Thank you for, for inspiration. Me, this... I was looking for the inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel this this could totally work. Yeah. 
Great. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank Sorry, Joe. Awesome. Thank you, Ben. So after Ben, now we have Josiah. And after Josiah, it will be Sergey. So Josiah, the stage is yours. Awesome. Do I do I have to go in the, the center of Gather? No, I'm just staying here. I don't know. So it's my first time presenting Gather. Sorry. Hi, Josiah. Hey. Are you able How to you? hear me? You mean good? Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Drinking coffee. It's a Monday, but I'll, I'll get right into it. I have a short amount of time here. So um, let me go ahead and share the screen. Okay. So I actually, hopefully we can see it here. Um, mm -hmm. I managed to go ahead and build a marketplace inside of Webflow using uh, Wised and Airtable Stripe and uh, Make to do a little bit of interactions. Um, so I want to kind of showcase that here. It's just some test data, so nothing real is in here. Um, and we'll be doing some more work on this, um, but essentially it's kind of like a test version of it. And yeah, everything ended up working and Wise allowed me to go ahead and do this instead of Webflow. Um, and so, for example, if we go to like go for product, we can actually go here. So the idea of this is actually with the um, the project owner, what we wanted to do is like really automate this. So it's not like a typical um, like 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 an eBay or something where you're uploading your own images. Uh, he really has a passion for helping uh, racket small racket shop owners, and so pulling from databases so we can actually get the product info and everything. So there's consistency and it feels like someone's shopping through a site. Like if you're going through Academy or something like that, instead of like going through eBay and seeing just a bunch of images and making it harder for the shop owner to um, um, upload everything on top of what they already have to do. Since it's like a, a local business, they're usually pretty busy. Um, and so the idea here is to be able to you know, find the product you want and see what sellers near you are selling it. And that way there's consistent everything there. Um, and then you can go ahead and buy it from that seller. And and this uh, will have a link that uh, takes you to just a Stripe Stripe link that the payment gets sent to that person and everything's handled on Stripe send on the, on the back end there. Um, and we are able to build a dashboard too, a pretty simple one. Um, you can go ahead and see the products you have listed. You can add more products, which then generate from uh, Airtable here and that will have filtered and stuff. And then we can do... Uh, list it with the regular price, which I don't, hopefully this is a great example of an example product and it might not be, but it's okay. Um, and then we'll have all the rest of the images, the pricing and if everything looks good, and then we can go ahead and list with the MRC, MSRP price. Um, and then that would actually, uh, that should have added it into Airtable and attached your Stripe seller account with this product and now add it to yours there. You can come back to my dashboard and I can actually probably share the wise and if anyone wants to see that, that's, that's probably where the bulk of the stuff is happening. Oops. Okay. That should be working here. Yeah. So a lot of this was, was actually built in wise like Stripe API, um, Airtable API is pulling some location info as well. And so this actually allowed us to do a lot in here and have all these pages get built and have the, the uh, all the data get called. So for example, if we go to, um, let's see, add items to accounts here. Loads up. Um, we'll just click on one of these again. <clears throat> so we can see here on the left that it's pulling in the data for that item. Um, from Airtable, and then everything can get built inside of Airtable to go ahead and do that, which we have everything linked in here. So, function of these, make this product, make payment link. So, all this stuff gets automated. So, for now, I have automated through make um, before I end up, I'll switch it later to write more scripts instead of going through make. Um, but essentially, it's just like once something happens in here, it sends a webhook, which then goes to uh, make and does a whole um, product flow for like attaching it to Stripe and to the seller and all of that, that fun backend stuff. Um, I can go ahead and I guess I can put this link if anyone wants to play around with it inside of uh Josiah, just to let you know, you have one minute left. Okay. I think I've pretty much done that and just showed the, the bulk of it, but I can go ahead and put the link at the bottom for people. Uh, this is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so you did this for fun? Um, no, it was um, kind of an exploration that we did a design sprint with a, a client and um, to see if this thing even had some market fit. And so essentially, this is not the version that would be going live. We're going to do something else. So I'm actually going to build a, um, a coaching marketplace. So that's going to be like, if go find coaches in your area. So it's not going to be products because he had a lot of complexity on his end that wasn't in my control um, with how he wanted to handle some of the business side of things. And so we're doing that other route instead. So now this is just kind of here playing with this, like experiment, learn more and wow. um, really figure out why and, and all that fun stuff. But yeah. I feel like you should do a tutorial on this. There's a lot of people looking to do marketplaces like this on Webflow using WISE. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about it. I really want to. Um, there are, because on WISE then, there are like some, doing some of the custom um uh, I guess custom command or calls here are sometimes a little, a little weird. And especially with Stripe, uh, it's doesn't, you can't easily write the URL encode, um, stuff inside of wise. So I'm trying to figure that out a, a little bit more. And so I can pull some stuff off of make and have it handled more here on this end. Um, but yeah, I mean, as of now, you, you could still totally build a usable one with how I, how I managed to put it all together. Yeah. I feel I actually, like I ran are interested in the, this back end stuff, you know, I, I ran a lot of the test data through Stripe and I actually had it sent where the payments were sent out to the person, like a percentage was taken out. Some calculations Stop. have to happen. Yeah. Calculations have to happen inside of like the products here. And it probably is a slightly better way of doing this, but I ran some formulas just to get the percentage that goes to, um, you know, would be the business owner or like a, I guess his name's Zach. So it goes to Racket Hub, and then the rest of that goes to the, the seller who sold the product. And wow. the Stripe price ID is attached right there. This data had to be kind of um, reformatted as markup in order to get some stuff in there for uh, rich text or Webflow. There's a, a lot of a lot of little workarounds to get some stuff to work, but it ended up working. And I did actually make a an API call for Webflow here to put the product into Webflow so we can... Um, I think early on, I, I was trying to see if we can use uh, attributes with WISE, but we can't. So I, I, there is some things I have to bring back into Webflow and duplicate in order to use all the custom filtering that um, I want to use and stuff. So that's why it's kind of duplicated to go to there too. And you can upload the image directly to Webflow? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like let's... Um... I have someone that was asking about this the other day. You really should share this with more people. I think, uh, I think that uh, should have already put the product in there. But... Josiah, this is a really impressive work. A lot mm -hmm. of things going on here, but also not a lot of things. You know, a lot yeah. of deep functionality, but yeah. you've you really found a good way to make all of this happen with the least amount of products. So mm -hmm. really nice. And I do think a tutorial would be great. I think awesome. people would really like that. Cool. Can I give I two it. design feedbacks? Oh, yeah, of course. For on sure. that home page. Uh, let's go back to the let's get out of this here. So the home page, yes. Number one, that top right text. Okay. I have two problems with it. Number one, that graphic is right behind some of the most important text. I usually never like to have some type of graphic behind or in front of text to make it any less readable. And really okay. the word help here is one of the primary verb actions for yes, what yeah, kind of they're thought. trying to do. So I would, that, that graphic is cool, but maybe like under the text or even to the far top right, just so it never hits it. And then number two on that top right, I would, I would put a little bit less max width, make that, that yeah. paragraph a little bit more readable with less max width. And then the final comment, when I first looked at the arrows with the mm -hmm. various equipments, shot through various equipments, I wasn't entirely sure if w which one that arrow is for. Yeah. Usually okay. you see text and then arrow. So my first thought was it's text and then arrow but really it's arrow and then text. So I think just a little bit more space between those will make it a lot more clear that it's arrow text and then you know exactly where you're clicking to get to the right equipment. 
Mm -hmm. Honestly, for, for marketplaces, what I would suggest is go to Etsy or, well, Amazon is a little chaotic, but go to Etsy and just imitate the same layout with the same type of buttons, drop downs, sorting, filtering, because people like they have studied that UX and marketplace can get tricky. So just use that same layout and follow, follow the same thing and just add your, your own creativity to it and colors and typography and stuff. Awesome. Okay. Great. Josiah, we have some questions from the comments here. I'd love okay. to ask, ask you them. Sure. Uh, Mika says, is this Airtable to Webflow CMS or is it pulling directly Airtable API? No, um, so the way it's working in here, it's uh, Airtable to Webflow CMS. Um, there, in Wise though, I am actually pulling pure data from Airtable. So the way this works is you build out a template page inside of Webflow. So like uh, add new item confirmation. So this is blank, like there's a loading, like all this is essentially a template page. Like you make a template CMS page and then wise you go in here and then you start calling in all that data. So this is calling the product price. This is calling a product image. Um, this will call more images. This has a, um, an action on it that performs a request. Um, and so essentially you just make a template page inside of a Webflow, and then you pull the data you need in uh, wise. Very nice. Thank you. Um, was there another one? I think I saw one more here. Just a bunch of positive comments. I want to share that with you. Super cool. This is techie techie. Um, mm. Love seeing all these integrations. Amazing project. So you're getting a lot of love for this. So great yeah. job. Thank you for sharing. Does anybody have any more questions or comments for Josiah? Let's see, someone did mention here, I feel like uh, Airtable to Webflow Wise, I feel like is a bit slowy. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes Wise can be a little bit slower because I think most of their servers were initially in Europe and I'm in the States, um, if I'm not mistaken. But I think they're fixing that here really soon. I've been following a lot of, of their stuff, but um, yeah. Yeah, I, I believe there's a V2 coming, Yeah, uh, an update to this. And I've heard it. I've also heard it whizzed. I hear it both ways, wised and whizzed. Yeah, I, I've heard it. I think I've heard it whizzed a lot more than wised, but I guess I, uh -huh. I used to call it wised. So. Yeah, nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Josiah. Great project. Thank you for sharing. These technical wins really help us understand that we can push the boundaries of Webflow. That yes, we have this great platform for design control, for layout control, but we also have this platform which lets us, lets us build powerful business applications that let people run their business better. So love seeing these, it gives me a lot of enthusiasm and inspiration for, mm -hmm. for more projects like, these, like this to come. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you, Josiah. Who's we next? Have having me. Sorry, next we have Sergey. After Sergey is Lucas, after Lucas Dimitris, and I'll let you know who's after Dimitris. So Sergey, you're up. Okay, thank you, Victoria. I'm going to show the project that FinSuite team has built that was not built by me itself, but I'm presenting from the name of Eve Kaiser, who is our great web for developer and he actually living in Brazil. And this is why GitHub has chosen him to develop this website because he also lives in Brazil. And that was for the people in Latin America. Uh, so this is really big project for FinSuite because now we are as developers of something that related to GitHub. So this is huge. And first, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you Figma file. So this is how the design came, uh, and the design was made by uh, another studio, design studio. So it's super bright, super cool. Like you can feel this from Latin America, from the colors and from the mood of those characters. This is really awesome, bright design here. 
I will just quickly scroll through the uh, through the design itself, and the way how they ha have communicated um, all the animations and the requirements was also through the Figma file. So here is the live prototype. When you can just like hover over some of the stuff, you can see how they exactly wanted to have those interactions and some of the animations in hover, like how the, this map should work. Okay, it's funny, it's not working right now. Okay, good. But now we just jump and see how if transform this webflow, uh, this Figma file into webflow. There we go. Oh, and by the way, just to mention, this was built with client first mentality. So this is neat and organized. And when you look into Navigator here, you can read from the structure. You can see immediately understand the structure of the build uh, where everything is. You don't even go to the, uh, to the right side. You can understand all the structure from the left side, which is beautiful in terms of building websites. So you see like map sections, everything is named according to client first mentality. Okay, now let's look at the website itself. So here is the hover animations, which I think even better than they were in the prototype itself. Now we go down, we see animation of the map. We see how the presenters, how the speakers are popping up and then when you click to the presenter it will just scroll down to the presenters uh, section i won't do this just don't want to skip part of the site now we see this revealing animation hover animations on scroll and I think it's really good balance of animation and static content. So it doesn't distract your attention from the content itself. Like there is some animation, but it's not in your face. Like it's not too much. And designed by Insani, which is design company and then developed by FinSuite which we're really proud of and made with love but heat hub so yeah this is it this is websites um i can drop the link so you can also yeah i should have it done before, i love it anyway. nice yeah <laughs> really bright and cool yeah i'm colombian so you were spot on with the colors it's very true everything that's latin it's super colorful i absolutely love it congrats fin suite team for getting this uh all the illustrations who did are those illustrations custom so these assets and all the design came from uh from the studio, you can, if you scroll down to the page to the footer, I just dropped mm -hmm. the link uh, to the chat. You see designed by Insani, so this is the studio. They made all the illustrations and everything. You see, this is really also like bright and funny studio. So beautiful. It's such an exciting design. You know, it's, uh -huh. it's, it's amazing that you can get somebody excited to go to a digital event. And I think the designers on this nailed it. It's just, mm -hmm. you got to, yeah, if you're interested, you want to go by looking at this. Uh, and I love the interactions. I hear, I see it from Robert. I really like the animations on the site. Not too little, not too much. I agree. It's a little sprinkling of fun, but it never actually takes your attention away from the content, away from the purpose. So yeah, when this project came through, this was a, we got to get this no matter what, doesn't matter how much it pays, mm -hmm. doesn't matter anything else. Like we need to work mm -hmm. on this because having a company like GitHub get this built in Webflow says a lot. 
they literally mm. work for a team, a company of developers with so many different ways to build websites and so much talent in building. And they chose Webflow for the marketing site. So it's just a huge win for the Webflow community. So yeah, really exciting project. Yeah, beautiful. What a great job. I can't stop scrolling through it. <laughs> nice. Um, just one thing to mention is that at a uh, session to Google Calendar was also implemented by FinSuite product, um, Colin White. So when you click, you get directly to Calendar and then you can just like add this to mm -hmm. your Google Calendar as a reminder. Cool. Very, very cool. I love it. Anybody has questions? <laughs> The websites built in Webflow are much more sophisticated and elegant, says Dimitris. Ben says, I'm so afraid of yellow backgrounds in web design, but this is amazing. That is very true. Like, this is crazy that you guys were able to pull these colors. It is. It, it's usually a little too loud. Yeah. That yellow background, it just, it becomes too much, but it's not too much here. The no. pink, that light blue, it just brings out that color. I love it. Yeah. yeah. People say we need some white space, you know, Ralph, but this yellow space is really awesome. And the white space was used exactly where it had to be. You know what I mean? Like where the speakers were featured. Right. Very cool. I love it. Yeah. Um, nice. Robert says, Joe, as a side note, FinSuite might want to look for more ways to collaborate with GitHub. Maybe start developing a relationship with them. We should. Yeah. Would love to collaborate with GitHub. I don't know exactly with what, uh, but them building a site on Webflow, that's a good entry way to, to talk to somebody about it. So yeah, Robert, I, the team will follow up with that. Nice idea. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you, Sergey. So, so next we have Lucas and after Lucas, we have Dimitris. So Lucas, the stage is yours. Hello guys. Uh, it's nice to be here again. Hope everyone is doing well. Uh, today I'm going to present one of our uh, a project from one of our clients at Snowhouse Studio. And it's a pretty long and uh, complex, not not too complex, but it's a big project uh, that they decided to release in batches. Uh, so they have something up and running as they build it. And it's literally, uh, it's basically a um, like a founder to founder coaching and mentorship uh, kind of platform. And uh, we had kind of like a short deadline to release the uh, like an initial landing page, which is was kind of like 80% uh, done, which is this here that you can see in Figma. But one day before launch date, uh, because they, they were going to have like an event with founders from all over the globe. Um, and they needed this up and running for that. But one day before uh, the launch date, they decided to change everything in the last minute. So that was super tricky, you know? And this is, I'm gonna talk a bit about the process. And uh, this is all we had in our last meeting, kind of like this wireframe here with some ideas, you know, like background colors and everything. Um, Lucas, I don't, I don't see your screen. Oh. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot, guys. The screen share. <laughs> Can you see it now? Yes. Okay, good. Sorry about that. Um, so yeah, this was what we had on the works, but again, they decided to change it in the last minute for this. Uh, this rough, like a wireframe made by him, by by the client. 
And the time was very short. So uh, I decided that I would need to develop and uh, design and develop this straight into Webflow, although I like to have stuff in Figma before, always. So here I'm gonna show you guys um, speed build video of the process. And we were using uh, Relume for a couple of the components there and also client first. And this is probably without these, these tools, you know, and, and client first framework, uh, we wouldn't be able to uh, deliver this on time in this situation, you know? So that was super helpful. And here is the current website, which is already launched. So um, I would love to hear you guys' feedback, but uh, most of the things are already approved, but we can always suggest the client to change and improve because we're, as I said, we're doing this on the go. So uh, it's pretty simple, you know, pretty simple design, no uh, rocket science or anything, just a beautiful typeface, with lots of white spacing and uh, big elements and some nice little interactions here and there. So, yeah, you can see some interactions, scrolling interactions here. Um, and here there's a Lottie, little Lottie video. Again, more little interactions in here as well. And here we have this, um, this uh, was a little tricky to build. That's kind of like a testimonial section with a vertical scrolling of the photos. So we used two uh, sliders in Webflow and use some custom code to link both of them together. As you can see. And yeah, this is what we have for now. And there's also this page here for uh, where the, these founders can apply. And uh, later down the road, we're gonna be using uh, memberships functionality to make their uh, their members area and everything and everything. So uh, it was nice that uh, we got the beta access uh, already for that. So we can build it uh, all in native Webflow membership. So yeah, this is it guys. Beautiful, Lucas. You always make such beautiful designs. And the fact that you did Thank it you. straight there, I mean, obviously you had the previous idea of how it would look like, but this looks like an apple landing page. I love it. <laughs> Thanks, Very Vanessa. subtle, uh, clean, a lot of white space, which I love. Honestly, I love everything about it. Very nice. Cool. Thank you. What do you think, Joe? Well, Lucas, I have a question about how you're reacting to that last minute change. Yeah. And I think a lot of people in here probably have that same question, right? You build the whole thing, you do yeah. all this work for the client, and then they say, wait, change my mind last second, now do this. So like, are you charging more money? Are you m mad at them? Like, is this <laughs> difficult to do? Or do you just see this as part of the process and you're you're inviting this type of change? Uh, yeah, that's a good question, Joe. And uh, I think that our normal behavior or reaction when this happens is always get a little mad, right? Uh, and But this is very normal to happen. Clients will always be clients and it's people change minds, you know, and usually it's for the better. So we have to kind of like know that already and know that this, this is very common to happen. And in this case, we didn't charge extra because um, I knew that I would find a solution. You know, I, I knew that I would be able to accomplish this and uh, within that time frame. And the solution was to just do it straight in Webflow and take advantage of Redume and uh, Client First to, um, to accomplish it, you know. And of course, uh, we did uh, uh, we did have a meeting to go over that wireframe that they that they sent me this one here, and of course we discussed like uh, how these could look like you know the kinds of elements and some references that we could use. So it was very well aligned in order to make it accomplishable, you know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's uh, that's a good question, and that was super tricky, but I just try to act normal and uh, 
I let them know that that was a big ask and that's not ideal at all. And it wasn't ideal already because uh, the first version that we, that was already on the works was already in a super tight deadline, you know. And I told them that one week we don't usually like to have this um, this kind of time frames because it could um, compromise our quality, you know. And not, not only our quality, but our, but our internal workflow as an agency, the other clients and everything. Uh, but in, in this case, uh, we really like these clients, this client, and uh, I wanted to make it work and in the, in the most efficient and, and, and best way possible, you know? Mm-hmm. Great. That's a great answer. It, it, it's not ideal. But at the end of the project, at the end of the day, you are there to make sure that they're thrilled with their website. And that's what you're doing. Yeah. I think really high quality work. I think those illustrations is what takes it from like a simple wireframe type site to a really well branded and designed website. This is cool. Yeah. It's simple. It's nothing too wild but it adds that branded feel to it and it makes me feel that it's professional. So yeah, great job. Yeah. Nice. Really Thanks, nice. Joe. Thank you, Lucas. So we now have Dimitris and after Dimitris, we have Harshit. So Dimitris, you're next. Hey y'all. Hi. Hi. You <laughs> Where are you? I'm sorry, I just had a training session and I couldn't make it home. Nice. <laughs> Let's see what you did. Um, so after um, after I submitted my my project, I realized that it's, uh, it's not very exciting for anyone but me. But I will <laughs> use this time to thank <laughs> some people for this. <laughs> uh, so... Uh, what happened is um, I wanted to to dive deep into JavaScript, at least deeper. And uh, Alex Iglesias is the big inspiration for me, as you may, some of you know. Um, and I decided to build the Pokédex. If you don't know what Pokédex is, it's back from the Pokémon era, and it was used to, like, kind of detect an animal and tell you... Um, stats and images and where you can find it. So I decided to like go a little bit further with the Webflow um, function and design this in Figma, like make it pixel perfect for Webflow and add a lot of custom code behind it. So that's why it's probably not exciting to anyone else. But all right, here we go. Here's the project. Let me reload the page. Um, it uses it uses this retro font and this old school animation to bring the text here. Please, please well, make sure to share your screen. Uh huh. I'm not sharing my screen. No. No. Uh, entire screen. Yeah, window. Okay, okay. Sorry, guys. Sorry, sorry, guys. Yeah, the music permission. No. Melissa, is it possible? Is it possible that you okay, present this? Um, on my Mac OS, I can't see where it needs to gather to take access. Uh, go. Oh, on your Apple? Yeah. I haven't um, used it for anything else. You have to go to permissions on, I'm on system I'm preferences. On my, I am, I am, but I can't see if Chrome has access. Oh, come on. Should we go with somebody else uh, until you figure it out? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. a good idea. So, okay, cool. Awesome. Thank you, Dimitris. So, Harshid, you're next. Are you ready to present? Uh, yes, I'm ready to present. Is my, is my voice audible? 
Yes, sounds good. Nice. Okay, so uh, generally I like to share tips and tricks related to Webflow. So I'm going to do the same today as well. <laughs> so uh, the use case that I want to share today is having multiple nav bars in a single website where the design of the nav bar looks different. Uh, sometimes uh, some elements, color changes, the maybe font, not font really in, yeah. But we have different type of nav bar in the same website having different styles, but we want to make sure that the links inside the nav bar and the buttons inside nav bar are same so that we, we can use basically nested symbols and keep them safe. Now, the challenge is a lot of times a style is too different, like the background color is changing, uh, the underlying color is changing. So in that use case, what, uh, what I have uh, did with some small CSS, I have figured out a way where I can use a single symbol, a nested symbol, and create multiple variants of a single nav bar. Uh, nav bar. Uh, it's just very easy to maintain in a website. So I'm going to share my screen and present it to you here. Okay. Is my screen visible? Yes. Nice. So as you can see, I have a nav bar here on the home page of this project. This is a project that I built a few months, a few months back. And uh, you can see that this is called nav bar dark. And maybe I should make a little zoom here. There we go. So this is called nav bar dark. And if I click on click inside this, you can see the main nav bar component. So this is the main nav bar component that is getting used in all of the nav bars. So when it comes to variants of the nav bar, I have multiple variants. So for example, if I go to Y forma, this page, I have a different nav bar here. The background color is different. The text color is different. The logo color is different. So there is there are differences. And these underlines that you see is just to make them more good looking, I'm using a diff block as an underline and then some interaction to kind of make them visible and invisible. So as you can see, this nav bar is different in style, but if I click on it, we have the same nav bar component inside this. Uh, now you can use nested symbols to make minor changes. Like I can maybe use a wrapper with a different background color, but changing the whole thing like uh, underline color, text color, then uh, the color of the logo, it becomes difficult. So what we do is generally we take a wrapper. So as you can see here, a nav, I have a nav bar wrapper and I added a combo class called is light PG or is light background. And same with, uh, same what I will do after this, after this, what I will do uh, is light background. I will go inside my global styles embed or you can have a custom embed of your own. And here I will add some a small amount of CSS for that particular nav bar, uh, which you can see uh, right here. I have nav bar styles. This is for all the nav bars. Then we have nav bar light. We have nav bar light white, which is basically uh, the lighter version of the nav bar, but with a white background. Then, uh, yeah, so I have these nav bars. So I'm just going to change my page and show one more version here, which is on, uh, I believe, customer's page. There we go. Here I have white logo. All the links are white and uh, everything works fine on the interaction as well. Now the trick is that, again, I'm using the same trick here, nav bar. Uh, I have a different combo class this time. And with using CSS, I'm changing the color of the text underline and also uh, the logo here. And then what we can simply do is have different interaction made for different nav bar and put them on the page. So uh, finally, what we have basically is a single nav bar component getting used in all of the pages, but they look different. So now if I change link of this, uh, this particular link, if I change the maybe page settings, if I change any link connection, it will reflect in all of the nav bars. So yeah, the, the, that is something I wanted to present. I'm not sure if you are already doing this, but uh, this is a really nice trick that I try uh, try to use in my projects. Uh, please ask any questions if you have. Yeah, so simple, but so good. Uh, very useful for even other elements, you know, to be able to reuse them out, uh, throughout the site. Love it. Very cool. Thank you, Melissa. Uh, I'm going
it's really interesting to see projects like this because you know they're from clients. Because we as web developers and web designers, we probably wouldn't design our nav in three different Read variations. Of the project here, it's... so that everyone can see. There we go. Can can everybody hear me? Yes, yep. I can hear you. Yep. Okay, great. Uh, so it's really interesting that a client sends that mock-up with three different nav bars where we probably wouldn't design it like that because it's just weird to update. It's we it's naturally we would want one nav bar that's used for the whole site, right? As web developers, yeah. as Webflow users, that's what we want. So it's really interesting to see the client requirements and think, okay, let's create a solution for this. You need three nav bars with all the same content. We don't want to update three nav bars. We just want to update the styles of those nav bars. So I really see this as a solution to fix a client request. Um, and I, I love it. I think this is really simple. I hate the idea of updating three nav bars and I've done it in the past, right? Yeah. It's, I feel like we've all done it where we have, I think we have two all separate done it, yeah. symbols I... and it has the same content. And if you update the link there, it's got to update in the other one. And this is a really nice tip. So thanks for shit. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. Actually, could you use a jQuery or JavaScript uh, class adder. So basically, based on an attribute or a description, you automatically mm -hmm. adding the, the combo class? Yep. Uh, I also tried that method. That is also possible. Uh, but there is a downside that, you know, when whenever we are using jQuery, it might create a maybe blink where you will see, you know, the color changing on the page. When we are using CSS, it loads much faster on the page. So that's why I went ahead with the CSS method here. But what you are saying is also possible where uh, on every page, maybe with some attributes, we will add attributes like navbar value is equal to light. And based on that, we are adding class on top of the links or underlines. That is also possible. But there is a chance that it will create a blink on the load of the page. So yeah, that's why I use CSS. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Any other questions, comments? Great. OK. Thank you so much, Harshit. Really appreciate it. Thank you, sir. So next is Dimitris. Dimitris, are you ready to present? Yeah, I am. Cool. OK, go ahead. Thank you. So I, as I was saying, I'm the only one excited about this. So like, bear with me for two minutes. And I don't know if you heard me before, uh, my idol on coding is Alex from Finchy. Uh We were texting back in like three months ago and I was asking him uh, something about the view framework in JavaScript. And because I didn't understand anything that I was doing, I realized that I was like way, way out of my league and started getting the JavaScript fundamentals right from the beginning. So let me share my screen now. Um, so I decided to make this project, this Pokedex, as I said uh, before, it's designed in Figma and uh, I didn't want to export it as SVGs, so like these cutouts, I thought I would give myself a try to and challenge me and make this whole functional and graphic inside Webflow with custom CSS only. So here is the result. Let me rephrase it. Now the Pokedex is loading. Um, and here we have some retro effects of the typewriter, uh, like the old Game Boy, if you remember, if you played Pokemon before. Um, and here you can search any Pokemon. Like, for example, I can press one. Um, the function is that it waits for a couple of seconds before I enter anything else. If I haven't entered anything, so it will go and uh, put this number in the last in the last digit. So if I press two numbers, it will go to 72, or like three numbers. And um, I use these arrows to 
go like up or down. They're both functional. And uh, from the API, it takes also the front and the back sprite of the Pokemon. So these arrows can give you a back view of the Pokemon. Uh, here it's dynamically updated to Pokemon type, uh, the API, the endpoint. Um, it's the first time I did like uh, before uh, before planning of something, and it turns out that it helped me a lot. Um, so uh, what ha uh, here also a randomized button that you can take like from a specific uh, number of Pokemon and throw it as a random one. I still have an error. Um, what else? That's all. Ah, here is some custom CSS to bring uh, this light into play. And uh, one big shout out is to Armand Sal. Uh, he provided a template, a GitHub repo template that you can actually work inside Webflow and on your local machine. And uh, the code uh, and the Webflow site updates as you are saving your code. So you don't have to refresh the Webflow site every time you're saving. This was uh, a life savior. Um, I was looking for it in um, pin switch tunnels, in uh, Webflow party tunnels, and this guy presented this repo and it, uh, it, it helped like, it saved me like hours. Um, that's it, I'm very excited. It has more than 200 lines of code, which is, is, is still amazing, as amazes me. Um, and thanks to this, uh, Paul Higgs for the original code pen that he provided and I, I, I replicated. That's all. Yay. Thank you very much. I especially am proud of this because I know how much he loves this stuff. And like, he's been practicing so much and now like sharing everything and then also presenting Dimitri. Remember the first time you presented here that you were like so nervous and now you're like- Yeah, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still very, very nervous. I'm still very, very nervous because they're like- No, you don't look oh, you, you are, I'm presenting in front of everybody that I look up to. This is so much difficult <laughs> and exciting at the same time for me. Yeah, great. and I, and I feel like um, with this template, like uh, the workflow is connected to the coding, the, the VS Code, for example, the application, and it was so, so easy to test and run code that it's not very easy, like the code sandbox that you can put the code inside of the cloud application and uh, save the code and refresh on the workflow side. This is, guys, mm -hmm. like instant, like working natively on your desktop nice i will provide for the links if anybody feels like they want to yeah why don't you put it on the showcase somebody said here see you on the showcase uh, dimitris i put it and i also yeah what happens with this uh, uh, uh repo is that if you install it on your vs code and it uses uh, a bit tool that you can uh, practice your code in your local machine and you connect with the Netlify, your, your Netlify account. So whenever you are ready, you can push your GitHub code and this automatically uh, synchronizes with Netlify. So you can work and test your code locally. And when you are ready to push it to your uh, official Webflow account, you just push it to your uh, Netlify account. And this is automatically synchronized. And uh, mm -hmm. I can't switch. It Talk was like about magic. that for years. <laughs> It was like magic, yeah. And all <laughs> thanks to Alex, like if he didn't tell me, like none, you. Nice. You should do Very it. Very like, cool. Another... Love it. What do you think? Ama Joe? Amazing to see this, uh, and I, I don't think you're the only one that finds it interesting. I think everybody in here is finding this very interesting. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. This is not easy to do especially for someone who's just getting started. So this is impressive work. Uh, being able to build this, it was clean, it was smooth. Uh, multiple API calls, really, really yeah. great work. And it's yeah. really nice that Alex inspired you. Because actually one of Alex's resolutions for 2020 
was to inspire people to learn JavaScript. So check, you're uh, you're in the club. I, I, must, so, I must admit that I'm on uh, Alex Inglesia's side about JQuery, how oh, to pronounce it, that it uses only native uh, vanilla JavaScript. I'm not a big fan of shortcuts. And I, I don't know TypeScript yet. I know Alex is a very a, a, a big fan, but... Mm -hmm. JavaScript can also be very overwhelming for somebody in the beginning. And to me, writing all this code, like stumbling upon a uh, next um, difficult object or something, I couldn't like translate it into a TypeScript yet. yet. But I feel like uh, jQuery is not the solution. No, it's not. Well, many, many things are very um, doable with the vanilla JavaScript nowadays. But I feel like jQuery should be abandoned all together. Yep, absolutely. Something I'll challenge you to do is look at that 200 lines of code and figure out how you can turn it into 150 lines of code or 100 lines of code. And you don't have to make the updates. I'm not saying like go and actually do this, but every time I see Alex looking at code, he's always like, hey, this doesn't have to be here. You can create this function like this and create a loop instead of calling each time here. I'm not saying do it. I'm not creating extra work for you. Just <laughs> analyze your code. Now that you've gotten to this step and you're like at the next level, look back at what you were doing and say, well, how can I improve this for next time? And every time uh, you do one of these projects, you're going to get better and better and better. So congratulations. Thank you, Joe. This is actually very, 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 very good to say. It. Um, I did. Uh, you should know I did the refactor like a couple of times, and Good. I uh, after after this I um, I read about this uh, refactoring shell. So you are just refactoring, it's not actually going to your next project. And decided to, like, <laughs> okay, push the publish button, uh, go do anything to to show it to the world and to to make it tactile, like to exist. And maybe you can come back later if you feel like you need to do something. Yeah, mm -hmm. but Absolutely. yeah, this is so valuable that you said. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Alex. Yep. Thanks a lot. Thank you for sharing. Great. <laughs> okay, that brings us at the ninety-minute mark. So that means we are done with show and tell. If you are still on the list and you did not get to go, you will be priority order for next show and tell. If you still wish to share. Uh, but we do cut it at 90 minutes. Melissa, mm -hmm. what are you thinking? What are you, what are you excited about Amazing. in this show and tell session? I love seeing everybody's work. Um, this is a great opportunity for people to just show what they're doing and also practice presenting. You have to present with your clients. So this is this is awesome, and also accepting cri cri uh, cri uh, criticism, critiques, yeah, critiques, um, and get better. You know, uh, sometimes we get so caught up in the daily work that we don't know if what we're doing is good. It looks good. It's you know, it serves a purpose. So that's why I love this this show, and and I can't wait to see the the the, the other ones that are coming. Absolutely agree. And I'll double on that presenting comment. The presentation part of it is so important. And I give a big round of applause to anybody that presented that doesn't normally present things uh, mm -hmm. because it's hard and it gets easier and easier every single time. So keep coming back, keep sharing your work, keep practicing this. It's going to help you in so many aspects of life. So big thanks to everybody, sharer or presenter or non-presenter. Big thank you. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. Thank you for having me, Joe. Thank you for being here, Melissa. Absolutely. Very, very nice. And with this last minute, I will say tomorrow on the FinSuite live stream, 12 Eastern, we're talking about the new FinSuite logo redesign. We have a light update to our logo. We went from lowercase f to capital F, and we're talking about that design decision on the stream. We normally don't do design things, but we have Sergey on board. Sergey is one of our top designers, and we're going to talk about the decision to make that change. 
So it's going to be very designy. Come if you like it. And that's it. Thank you so much. Everyone have a great rest of the day. Keep rocking out. Thank you. Bye, guys. Thank you.